today we are going to talk about tools. I have a lot of awesome tools to discuss. And basically they're all going to be paper crafting related. Um, so I have a total of, hi Debbie, welcome. So my name is Janine. I am the paper craft buyer for Craft Warehouse. And today I want to share with you tools. Um, we're calling this next level tools um, because I kind of want to show you sort of going from basic and then what, what are the upgrade options and sort of the pros and cons of different tools. Um, what makes them good, what makes them not great. You know, every, every tool for a job, right? There is a tool for every job. <laughs> And having tools that work well and um, are a joy to use just make crafting more fun um, and enjoyable. And it certainly is frustrating when you have a tool that doesn't work properly. So we're going to discuss all different kinds of tools. I have 10 categories I want to get through today. So um, I'm going to talk about trimmers. This is what I hope to get to. Trimmers, scissors, knives, adhesives, um, cardstock, ink pads, tweezers, pens, and mats. Hopefully I get through all of those things, but I am going to start with trimmers just because they're kind of big and bulky here. Hello, welcome. So feel free in the comments if you want to give a shout out to that you are, we're going to talk about trimmers first. So give a shout out to the trimmer that you use, that you like, that you recommend to your friends. Um, if you have any of the tools that I'm using and you agree or disagree with something I say, leave that in the comments. Let's let everybody be able to use this video and your comments as research to be able to decide what's right for them. Okay, so to start with trimmers, um, I've selected all trimmers that are at least 12 inches acceptance. There are smaller ones available, but I'm going to start with that because I'm kind of going with a paper crafter in mind and most pattern papers anyway are 12 by 12 anyway, right? So let's just dive right into it. I'm going to start with the Fiskars Slidey Trimmer. When I say slidey trimmer, I mean a trimmer that has a small blade like this that you slide up and down. There's all different brands, all different kinds. If I was going to recommend a trimmer to a beginner who never had one, who doesn't own any, I would, this would probably be the first one that I would suggest. Um, it certainly is thin, and so it's easy to store. It's lightweight. Um, refills are easy, are easy to find, and they're easy to put in and, and take out. So the old ones came with this kind of a blade that has this little X on there. But nowadays, um, most of the refills, and it was always like, what kind of refill do I need, you know? Nowadays, most of the Fisker refills are this, so the blade's exactly the same. Look how dirty that is. <laughs> um, but the top just has this easier to grip handle. And they have all of the Fisker slidey trimmers have a little notch where you slide it, put it in, and then it just is in. So it's super easy to, to swap out. Why do I like this particular slidey trimmer? First of all, the name brand. Fiskars has been around for, believe it or not, over 300 years. Absolutely. Hi, Carol. You like the Fisker trimmer and the cow guillotine. Okay, the purple cow guillotine. Um, so Fisker has been around for over 300 years. They have perfected blades and cuttings and all of that kind of thing. So they are definitely a good brand name. This product has been around for many years. It's been through a few few um, alterations with color and, and that kind of thing, but the basics are there. I like this particular one. They have several versions. In fact, this is my, this is my daughter's, <laughs> this little guy. Um, you can see it's kind, it's, it's kind of the same concept, it's just that it's a lot more narrow here. Why do I like this one? Um, first of all, the base. It has, in my opinion, one of the best bases. This is the Super Deluxe. It ha goes all the way past six. And as you know, most 12 by 12 paper is, um, most scrapbook paper is 12 by 12. And so being able to cut it down quickly, is, being able to get to that six inch mark to me is important. Most trimmers don't show you where the six is because there are these folding trimmers and you can't see the six. So I love that. I love that they have underneath of the plastic, they have marked common sizes. So it's easy to just to put your paper into those darker bold areas and slice. I like that the measurements are underneath the clear plastic so they'll never rub off. That's awesome. This piece right here, lock, oh, get frame. this piece right here locks this in place and you need that for storage if you do store it like this. 
their older ones never had that. And what happened is this would flop, would flop open. And then this part right here where the trimmer, the blade slides, is kind of loose. And the blade could fall out like it just did, or this can get damaged or tweaked a little bit, resulting in less than a straight cut, right? So that's why it's nice that they have that little locking mechanism when it's not in use. But if you are using it, you need to open it so you can lift this up and put your paper in. And then the other thing before I cut something, I'll turn it over. So it's reinforced, it has all these rubber feet, so it stays and doesn't budge on your on your work surface. And then this guy is a pull-out ruler. So it extends the measurement field all the way out here. And you pull it out and then you click it into place so it's perfectly straight. And it measures all the way out to 15 inches. So when you put a piece of paper in here, you butt it up against the top up here and you have and it butts up against this edge too. So you can really get great measurements all the way across like that. The other thing I like about the Fiskars is that it goes in inches and we have inches up here and we have inches down here. That's fairly unusual in most trimmers. So that is an, an, another really great feature. And then it has measurements way down to, um, let me open this up. So this is your cutting line, this zero. And then, so you have the one inch, the half inch, the quarter inch, the eighth inch, and the sixteenth. So this has lots of measurement, off, you know, makes it easier for you, easy for you to read. And then the last thing that I really love about this one is the, ex the extended platform on this side of the blade so that you can, when you're cutting smaller bits, so this is a common kind of paper that we see in, in scrapbooking, the kind that you need to cut apart. So I'll just trim this so you see how this trimmer works. So I've buttered up against this edge up here. This is the cutting line. And I just scoot that across and it will trim the paper very easily. And then I can trim out the next little square if I want to. Really nice. So this is a really great trimmer, especially for a uh, beginner level or budget minded. This is a great, great trimmer. I think it's on sale on our comment sold right now for $15, which is an amazing deal. Usually it's around 30 ish in most places you'll find it. So great trimmer. Really like this Fiskars one, especially for portability. So I'm not going, I'm not, this whole concept of this whole entire video is not going to be, oh, you need to get this more expensive one. It's, I'm going over the pros and cons and I'm only going to show you adequate things that I would recommend. This is sort of a virtual way of something I would do in the store. If I, if you came to the store and said, I need a trimmer, I would show you your options physically and let you do it yourself, but I'm going to do it for you virtually. Oh, that's okay. Okay. So that's the Fiskars. Then there's the next kind of trimmer. So we did a slidey, the next kind is sort of the rotary kind. This one, this bad boy is a new toy to me. I'm gonna open this up on so you can see the back. Okay, so it opens up, it's metal. Um, it comes with this ruler. I'm gonna show you how to use that later. You can lock it open. So those little, these little latches help lock it so that it stays in the full um, size. So it measures from one out to 12, okay? And this direction is 12 and I think a quarter, 12, 12 and a half this way, which is really nice for because sometimes those pattern papers that you get have that little UPC bar on them that you need to trim off. So that's really nice to have a little extra wiggle room. This is a self sharpening blade. So we do not need to replace the blade, which is great. It also comes with down here in this corner, this little hidey hole, little pocket where you can keep a bone folder. It comes with this one, which is great. And then of course it comes with this, this that I took off the back, which is a magnetic strip on the one side. And what this is, is a scoring, bring this up close, scoring line. And see these little teeth up here? Those fit right into the grooves of this trimmer. I'm gonna bring this up close. So it's just, it's. It looks like wood, but it's not. It's just like wrapped, but it looks, but it, the, this, this trimmer is just pretty, right? Of all the trimmers I'm gonna show you, this is the pretty one. <laughs> but these little grooves are actually notches. And that allows this guy with these little teeth to fit right in there. So let's say I wanted to score, um, I was making a card and I wanted to score it four and, um, four and a quarter. I can find the groove that says four and a quarter, there we go. 
this goes all the way down to one eighth, which is awesome. I'll bring this up close so you can see. So those little teeth fit right into these grooves. And now I have my score line exactly on four and a half, or four and a quarter, sorry, four and a quarter. So I can put a piece of paper in there. Let me get one. And I can put my, um, my cardstock in here and score it. So this paper is an untrimmed piece of paper. So if I put it right there, right there, it will cut, it will score right on the four and a quarter line. So it just fits right down into that groove. Okay, so then I have, and then I can use this tool to help me, this little bone folder to help me get that perfect little crease. So that's super handy. Then you'll notice it has this arcing shape here. If we take a closer look, we have 15 degrees, 30, and 45, and teeth on each of those. That is so that you can put it in at an angle. So there's 15, there's 30, and they just you can feel it just lock into place. So here's a 13, right? So then if you wanted to trim paper at an angle, you can do that by butting this is up up you're butting your paper up against this edge and trim and this cut right here will be a in this case a 30 degree angle. So that's super handy extra tool that it that it um, includes extras and then I saved the best for last over here this when you buy this it'll be stored on the back but you'll just pop it off put it on here add some batteries it takes some AAA batteries and voila we have a light and this light allows you to see through your paper I'm going to turn off my lights here my overhead lights, so you can kind of see that a little better there we go in, in real life, I can see it just fine, but on camera it doesn't come across. But see, you can see the cutting line. So this, as soon as this dark shadow line, that's your cutting mark. And so you can trim it very easily. Let me put, let me see, let's put something, because that's white paper. Let's try a pink. Here's a pink cardstock. So you see, you can still see through it. Let me try some, let me give it a harder test. This is gold paper, white on the back, gold on the front. Yep, still see through it. I don't think I don't think it'll show through this one. This is heavy metallic. Um, a little bit. I don't know if you can see past the shine. A little bit. That's that was a pretty hard one for it to so let me turn the lights back on here. Okay. So let me cut some stuff with it. Now the, the trick with this guy is that you want to start cutting from the top. So you always want to be cutting down. It's not that it won't cut up. You'll just get a more smooth, precise trim if you're cutting from the top. Okay, so let me just shave off. I'm gonna scoot the guy aside. Let me just shave off like an eighth of an inch, right? So I just butt my paper up against the top here. Is this in frame? Like that. And then I'm going to I use this finger guard to hold the paper in place and just pull that down. And then I just have this beautiful straight cut. Isn't that nice? And this is the this little test is the trick you should do for, or the test you should do for all trimmers that you're considering is shave off a tiny little bit, and then measure edge to edge. If those match up perfectly, then you have a straight cut. Do it a couple times to make sure it wasn't human error, but you, that's how you can ensure that you know that you have a straight cut. I've had this trimmer, I've been using this trimmer for a couple of, a few months now, and I really like it a lot. I really do. I love that it's self-sharpening. I love the light. I haven't used the angle part of this very much yet, but the score part is, has been really great. And also, um, it's really nice to know that I always have a bone folder because <laughs> you, you want to keep your trimmer, um, you know. You're, you're always using your trimmer. So, and then plus it just looks pretty. It's great. And it looks great on your desk. I love sort of the old school look with the wood. It reminds me of like the old school rulers, but it's heavy duty. It is metal and it is magnetic, which is why this guy stays in place because you can have that magnet on there. Okay. Um, so that is this guy. Now I want to show you an, uh, an alternative. If you like this concept, there is an alternative. I'll show you that. 
And this is the biggest, baddest trimmer I'm gonna show you today, is this guy. So this is dual rail rotary um, pet trimmer. It is massive. So this is from Fiskars, again. Let me turn it on the back side so you can see the back. Fully reinforced, lots of feet. It stays where you put it. You can use it in this in this um, direction, or you can, so it would be like this. So you can use it short, or you can use it long. Something to note that I really like about this one is the measurements go this direction, so you can read them this way. And it, you can match up here, here, and here, which is great. Plus the lines help you to do that. And we have the, um, the US and the metric. So you have every on, on every one of those. So regardless of which you use, it's easy to um, measure what your whatever it is you want to cut. This guy has a, another little notch. Let me see this right here, and that holds this in place. Okay, so you can lift that to get your paper in there. You can cut from the bottom or the top on this one. Your cutting line, your cut mark is right at the edge of the silver. It's underneath of this plastic. The edge of the silver. Every time you use this, it sharpens itself just like the other one. That's awesome. This dual rail system helps ensure an accurate straight cut. Let me cut a very teeny sliver. Let's do our test. That is a perfect. Can you see that? I hope that you can appreciate that. Maybe I should choose a color that's not pink, but perfect, perfect match. Great trimmer. What does this one have over the other one? Um, this is really a mixed media trimmer. So not only can this cut papers, this can also cut chipboard. Yeah, and burlap. Uh huh. Or multiple sheets of paper. Now on the tw the trimmer I just showed you, the We Are Memory Keepers, you can cut multiple sheets. Um, pro about up to four or five of a, like a 65 pound weight cardstock you could cut on the other trimmer before it just won't cut anymore. This one you can cut about eight of those sheets of that same size uh, weight, but you can cut chipboard really easily with this and have it be straight. So this is definitely more for a mixed media person. The cons on this guy, obviously the size is super big and bulky. It is heavy. It just, it takes up a massive amount of room. <laughs> um, those are all downs. The other thing I don't like about this trimmer as a paper crafter and particularly as a card maker when cutting very small pieces, so if you're already, if you're starting with something small, like this big, or this width, you when you use this trimmer, you have to put your paper into this guy. So if your paper is smaller than this guy, see, I only have this much room to adjust my paper. And if it was even smaller than that, it's just really difficult to get your fingers in there and get it to measure and get it exactly where you want it. So cutting small pieces, while not impossible, is just more difficult and kind of um, a bummer for me. I don't really like that part. But what I do like about this is if I have to cut a lot of things, or if I, if for example, I'm going to cut a lot of the same measurement or a lot of the same paper, um, this is just fast. It knocks it out quick because you can, you, like I said, you can cut so much at a time. You're, you're insured that it's going to be accurate. Um, and it, but I would say this is more for the serious person, person who does a lot of bulk work, um, and a person who um, is more mixed media is going to do more um, um, different kinds of medias that they need to trim, as opposed to pretty much only paper. Okay. Any questions so far? I'm so excited so many of you are watching. I hope this is informative. Give me lots of loves and, and thumbs up and stuff like that. Make comments. I'm, I'm trying to read the comments as we go. Okay, so that is the Fiskars Rotary. It does, um, this is the, their bypass trimmer that is a um, dual rail, always trim, always sharpens itself every time you use it, which is amazing. Okay, one more kind of trimmer, and that is a guillotine trimmer. There's all kinds of guillotine trimmers in the world. I'm gonna share, you, share with you my personal favorite. And again, I only chose trimmers that are 12 inches at least. So this is, the Tim Holtz trimmer by Tonic. This is 12 and a quarter. It's so big, I can't even put the whole thing in frame. <laughs> so when you buy this, the handle is actually back here. 
and as is the extension of the leg and that is um, not only so it fits in the box but also for storage or if you are on the go it has this handle this handle up here it's on both sides so you can pick it up and take it with you and take it where you want to go for picking up work surface this is nice because it's not it doesn't unfold this is it so it's nice that it doesn't take up so much of your workspace to put the handle on it just simply slides right in there there's no catch there's no screwing none of that stuff and it's, it's just friction and it's in there and then listen to this can you hear that oh yeah <laughs> there's something so satisfying about that sound i don't know and then let's put on the extension leg you don't have to use this but you can especially handy if you're going to be um cutting a larger size piece of paper. So if we turn on this end, right here there's a little trap door. See that? And so this part of the trimmer fits right in there, slides right in, and then it has a little kickstand. Okay, see that? So that's how your little trimmer extension ruler can, can uh, be attached. Let me get a bigger piece of paper here. So we can measure that direction or that direction. He did a good job of having measurements all the way down. So we have them put down here and we have both US and metric on all three, which is great. Love that. This extension arm actually does have a little lip, just like this one does, it's just a little shorter, but it's lined up perfectly. So you can definitely get count on that to aid you in getting a straight cut. And then these guys are what you hold the paper down with and to make sure that your fingers are out of the way when using this bad boy. It's a guillotine trimmer. <laughs> it is a, it's a giant blade. Look at the turn on the edge. Look at this. I'm hold, it's like holding a samurai blade. Look at that. <laughs> so let's cut something. Okay, and I'm gonna hold this down. Down. and it just cuts so slick it's really fun actually to use I definitely would not have this tool if I had kids that were also using my tools but it's essentially like a knife so I mean you have knives in your home even if you have kids so just be responsible you know put it where they can't get it because you don't ever want to grab like this you're you'll be grabbing the blade don't ever do that <laughs> Yes, it's a very sharp blade. This, that's right, Veronica. It is a very sharp blade. But if you like guillotine trimmers, this one is great. Um, obviously, this is uh, not meant, not going to be great for a left-handed person, but um, for everyone else, this is a good trimmer. It's not that you know, a left-handed person couldn't do it. It's just that it's a little, it's a little awkward to use your left hand and to be able to see where your cutting line is. So, um, but I think left-handed people adapt. My daughter does. So. Okay, so this is the Tim Holtz trimmer. So of, of all of these that I have showed you today, I would say that my personal preference as an overall trimmer is the We Are Memory Keepers trimmer. Let me bring that guy back up here. This is my personal preference of what I would like to use, that I do use. Um, I downsides um i wish it had a measurement over here too um for me there's not much more but when it comes to tools it's, it's there's not much more of a downside to me but when it comes to tools it's also about you know what's right for you and what feels right to you i like this kind of trimmer okay let's t what's our next topic let's do mats because then i can put my mat here crafting mats. So I'm going to talk about two different kinds. So there's this type here. This is a silicone um, crafting mat. Really good tool. This is this is a really great um, item to have. You want to have some kind of mat for your work surface so that when you're playing with different kinds of, of paints and inks and glues and messy stuff that you can protect your work surface, right? Um, and it also having a good mat that's easy to clean 
makes your life so much easier. It makes the whole process easier and it makes crafting more fun. Maybe a mat isn't the most fun thing to purchase, but it once you start using it, you just you, you don't realize what you were missing. I know a lot of times when we first get started, we're like, I'll just use some scrap paper or something. And that you can get by with that for a while, but once you use one of these, you realize how great they are. Is the memory our memory available store? Yes, it is. Um, you were asking, Moldy Jello, I love your name. <laughs> You're asking if it was available in store. Yes, everything I show you is available in our stores and or on our website. Okay. Um, so the, this is a nonstick mat from, from Ranger. It's great for paints, um, inks, messy stuff, glues. If you get glue on here, the best thing to do is let it dry, honestly, and then it will just peel off like a sticker. It's, it's a breeze. It's so much easier. If trying to clean up wet glue is not going to be fun. It'll, it's doable, but it's not going to be fun. Just let it dry and it'll peel right off. So glitter glue, uh, if you do Mod Podge, anything like that, this is great for that. Okay, um, do not, you can see that I here, I've done something you shouldn't do. Can you see my crease mark here? That's from folding it. Don't fold it because you're breaking up the fibers. I'll show you close up. You're breaking up the fibers and it's, a, it, it's not going to be right. That spot isn't going to be nonstick anymore. Super annoying. This is heat resistant, so you can use your heat tool on it, which is great. So if you do like shrink art, you want something like this, it will protect your, your countertop or whatever you're working on. When storing this, you just want to roll it up. Okay. Most of the time, if you have a craft space, like a permanent craft space, you can just leave it out there on your surface and then you just, you can always just craft on there and do all your messy stuff on there. Um, so yeah, it's heat, it's heat proof. It's messy proof. The one thing you don't want to do is you do not want to bring a craft knife to this. If you cut on here, you will cut it. Don't do that. <laughs> okay. Um, Veronica says you have the Tim Holtz craft mat that your brother won at, from us. Oh, that's awesome. And that is the next mat I'm going to talk about. So to upgrade or next to level your mat, this is what I would recommend is this guy right here. This is the Tim Holtz mixed media glass mat. This is the original full size. He, we do offer also a travel size, which is about this big. Um, they both are laid out this, very, this the same. They're both the same tempered glass material. They both have this peel away piece. So this is all glass. It's just black on the side and white on the side. And then you have this peel away piece, which is the same silicone material as this, except for it has a non-slip grip on the back. So use this piece for, this is best to use for um, if you're doing inking techniques where you're dragging paper through ink also in kind of glue or whatever. You can use those things on both the glass and this mat, but glue is just gonna be so much easier to peel off than scrape off, but it's, they're both doable. I like the glass mat because it has it has the rulers, so it aids you in measuring and lining up things, especially if it's a card maker or a paper crafter, I love that. This is also heat resistant, so you can use your heat tool on it if you want to, or over it. Um, it is tempered glass, so you can use regular craft knives. You don't use a steel blade, but you can use a regular craft knife on here and it won't damage it. It will kind of dull your blade over time, but it won't damage this, the mat at all. Um, it's great for alcohol ink. It's great for paint, um, inking, stamping, drawing, coloring, anything that's messy, clay work. Um, if you guys are doing like stuff with Sculpey, all that stuff. This is a great surface. Once I got this and installed it, I say install because this is, here, I'm going to install it installed. <laughs> but I say that because it's, you know, when you think of something being installed, you're like, it's, it's a, it's a tool. It's a, it's a thing that you're going to use all the time. And I do, I, this, this space is almost never without this. And probably every single video I do, this is guy is the base. It's just so easy to clean. Um, these lines here, um, are used so that you can, um, use each of these as like a little palette. So you could put your paint on here and then you can mix up colors. Um, you could put your ink pads on here. You could color on here, uh, but you don't have to use it that way. It's, it's just also nice to have a white versus a black surface because depending on what you're using or working with, you can see it better on one or the other. It's a very well thought out tool. Okay, so I would definitely say glass mat would be what I would recommend, but at least have some kind of mat that you can use for messy stuff. 
oh, by the way, when you get the travel size mat, the mini one, it comes with its own sleeve, which is really cool, a very protective sleeve so that you can take it around, hence the word travel. Um, I don't have that yet, but I, I, but I do love this guy. Okay. So our next topic, let's talk about scissors. <laughs> I wish I could say this is my whole entire collection. This is just um, some of my scissors. But I'm just going to talk about, I'm not going to talk about every single scissor. I'm just going to talk about a few particular kinds of scissors. Okay. So, I, I mean, I could talk about scissors all day, but I had to narrow it down. Okay. And I also, this is specifically for paper crafters. So this is um, a perfectly adequate, perfectly fine trim, uh, scissor. This is Cutter B. It's been around for many, many years. When you buy it, you're going to get... Um, a little sheath to keep it keep the tip protected I totally lost mine years ago but this is this is the cutter bee it's just a super basic scissor like all scissors no matter which scissor you have dedicate a scissor to whatever it is going to be for so if this is going to be a paper scissor dedicate it to paper this has long since been downgraded multiple times and now it's almost like I cut zip ties with this guy almost so this is not for paper anymore but um, so just like when you have a fabric scissor that's strictly for fabric so you want to you you want to keep everybody else's hands off of them. So you might even keep your favorite paper scissors under lock and key or hide them. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I know you do. <laughs> but let me talk. So this is a perfectly adequate, perfectly fine as long as you can keep it to um, uh, whatever it is you're gonna. So if you're gonna do it for paper, keep it to paper. This one is not gonna work for paper for me anymore because it's so beat up. All my edges are, yeah, it's just not gonna cut well. So next level, this is what I personally like is the Tim Holtz scissors. They come in two sizes. They don't come in red anymore. They're going to be both black, but you can get the original or the small five inch snips. I love that they have these super small, fine tips. Um, they're very pointy at the ends. They both are Teflon coated. So adhesive and stuff is not going to stick to them, which is amazing. I love that. Um, why I like this one, the handle is super big, so it's easy and it's not hard on your hands. It's not work to use. And the blades are teeny, 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 almost microscopic, um, uh, serrated. So that if you're, if I'm going to cut out this butterfly and I just stop, it stays gripped right where I stopped. So that is really cool. I love that. And you can just feel it cutting its way down. It doesn't feel slippery. It feels like I have control. If you're a control freak, you would love these. Okay. These are really great scissors. The, the, the five inch are the same idea. They're just smaller. So if you have smaller hands or you don't like those bigger handles, or you just want a really, really small blade, um, this, this, these scissors are great. So, and I do a lot of fussy cutting. So these are my personal preference are the Tim Holtz um, snips. Those are the ones I like. However, I would also like to, you to consider this one. This is from Fiskars. Also a very small blade, very similar in size. Also Teflon coated. This is the mixed media spring action. And the spring action, I know it doesn't even, it looks like a pair of pliers or something, doesn't it? If you've never seen one of these, this is, might be surprising to you. But you're gonna push down that button to release the spring. What this is, is it does half the work for you. And so these are actually um, approved from the Arthritis Foundation for ease of use. Um, so the spring action scissors work just like regular scissors. So you just squeeze this way. It's just that you only do half the work. I'm only have to squeeze down, not up. The spring brings it right back up. And they are a very smooth, smooth blade. Now you can get these in um, different types. I like the mixed media one again because it has the Teflon coating so it's easier to um, uh, cut through things with adhesive on them. But it cuts very nice, very precise. And it does not, it, like I say, since it does have to work for you, you're, you do not get that fatigue in your hand, especially if you do a lot of fussy cutting. Back, you know, 15, years ago we didn't have we didn't use die cut machines like we do now for every little die cut we wanted to trim out right so having um 
having a good pair of scissors is, was key. And I still love to fussy cut, and they, these are really great. Absolutely nothing wrong with these. These, these. This is what I would recommend and what I reach for all the time. This is perfectly fine and adequate, but it's long term. It's not comfortable to use for a long for a lot of fussy cutting, um, and it's uh, it doesn't have that Teflon coating, and it's just it's just kind of it doesn't have the the leverage that these do. So it's it. It just you get fatigued faster with these. So you just, I think you just need to think about how how much cutting are you going to do, and whether you want to enjoy it or not. <laughs> okay, so that is scissors. Since we're talking about um, blades and stuff, let's talk about craft knives. So this is a basic craft knife. You might have Exacto or a different brand. The Fiskars one is fantastic. It's a durable, detailed knife. It is has this great cushy handle. The, it comes with a cover. The refill blades are super easy to put in and take out and to and to find. This is a great cutter. But I want to introduce you to my little friend here. This is also from Fiskars. This guy is the exact same blade as this one, but it is the finger blade. So you slide it on your hand like a ring see that? I know it looks a little weird, but it's totally ergonomic and it's so much more comfortable to hold. So I just slide it on my finger like it's a ring and then I will hold it like a pencil otherwise. This makes it, this grip right here makes it so much easier to control. This is not a steel blade so I can use it on my craft mat here. But I can make that smooth curve with it, it, it doesn't feel weird to me at all. It's kind of like holding a pen. And look, and look at this, this easy cuts I can get with this. Isn't that cool? If you do, uh, if you like, if you like detail cutting and you don't, but you don't like scissors, if you prefer a craft knife, this one's great. It's also great for going around the edges of like chipboard or other things that you're trying to trim paper to fit to. If you do like altered books or bookmaking or anything like that, where you prefer a knife, this is a great, great um, tool. Um, I actually name all of my favorite tools. <laughs> I give them a pet name. This is Fritz. <laughs> I wonder what you'll name yours. <laughs> Fritz the finger knife. I really like him a lot. That's one I would recommend. Um, I understand in this, this idea might weird, this little, it might look, look weird or weird people out. This is a perfectly fine blade. It's just not as comfortable to me to use. And this one's, I think, 50 cents cheaper than this one. Um, you can use a self-healing mat behind it. Yes, you can use a self-healing mat with these. You want some kind of a mat. Like I said, this isn't, these aren't, are not steel blades, so they don't hurt my craft mat. But ideally, yes, you would use some kind of a self-healing mat like this one. Okay. Okay, then I wanted to talk about, just really fast, about tweezers. Um, there's, I'm looking for something small. Here we go, I have some small stuff. So um, most tweezers look something like this. So you need to squeeze to use, right? So I'm gonna, I wanna pick something up. You know, I get that under there, I squeeze it, and then I can move it around where I want it. Having a tweezer is a great tool to have, for sure. But I think that you should consider this one. This is a reverse action tweezer. So when you squeeze it, it opens. When you're not squeezing it, it holds shut. So that way, when I pick the same thing up, it holds it for me. So now like these, these little pieces are die cuts that I have glued together. So these are like little layers. Each of these little layers was a die cut. And so I was able to hold it, hold one of them with this guy, put adhesive on there, not ever touching the adhesive with my finger, and then would be able to then stick it onto where I wanted it without ever having to touch it. So super handy. Also, if you're tying ribbon, let me see if I have some. I 
have some twine. Sometimes when you're tying um, ribbon, you feel like you need another hand. <laughs> I, I find twine pretty easy to do, but if you needed another hand to help you, or you just wanted to put it to, you just wanted to put it together, um, like glue it on something, you can use this to hold the center for you while you work the ends back and forth. Does that make sense? And then you can put your um, adhesive on the back of this guy if you want to. Like if you had a little puddle of, of adhesive, I could pick this up, dab it in the adhesive, and then stick it on my project. So reverse action tweezers, um, it's a small category of tools, but it's, it's something like when you need a tweezer and you need one. It's also super handy to pick up like a letter sticker. And you know, it would be a similar concept to this. Picking up something sticky though, and being able to position and put it where you want, but not having to hold it. So let me find something similar here. Not having to hold this shut, like even squeezing this for a few seconds, this is a lot of strain right here. I feel the pain right here and right here. And especially if, if you have arthritis or, or have issues like that, having a reverse action is so much easier. I'm like, I, I don't know how long I could hold this. This is almost like holding your breath test. <laughs> this is, it is starting to hurt a little bit. So this, that's why I would just recommend um, if you don't already have some, get some, some kind of reverse action tweezer. These particular ones are from We Are Memory Keepers. And they have a very soft, cushy bit here. And if they were to get wet or dirty or something, you can pop these out and clean this very easily. And then they just, they just have like these little buttons. You see that? And they just pop right back in those holes very easily. There we go. Now, I have, now my my tweezers are ready to go. Okay, so I'll clean this up. And then the next thing, so we've talked about trimmers, scissors, knives, and tweezers. Let's talk about glue. I have done a whole video just on adhesive, so you can find that where we cover tons of different kinds of adhesive. I'm just gonna do the just some basics. Okay. Most paper crafters use some kind of a runner, okay? If you're gonna use a runner, there's a couple of different good ones, either the Sticky Thumb or the Tombow. I really do like the Tombow one. The Sticky Thumb also is my personal favorite runner, but this is more common and most people know, recognize this name brand. So this is the one I brought to show today. So the Tombow Tape Runner, perfectly fine, perfectly adequate, it works just fine. Let's glue some paper. Saw a little butterfly. So you just run it across and you, we've got a line of adhesive on there and you can stick it wherever you want it, right? Um, on t This is textured paper. On textured paper, it is a little harder to glue just because it that if the tape doesn't sort of sits, it glides across the top surfaces of the um, texture, so it doesn't necessarily want to stick as well. I In the cases where I would use something like this, honestly it would be more in the case where I'm making maybe a scrapbook page or something that's going to be in a protected sleeve. I would not, if I could help it, use it to make a card. Personal preference, but I'd want my cards to, to stay stuck together long term and I don't want it to get, fall apart in the mail. I've made hundreds and hundreds of cards. I started out using nothing but, but tape runners and over time if I, if I were to pull out some of those cards they would be, they would be falling apart already. Um, this one, look, I can, I just glued this a few seconds ago and it still was totally easy to pull back up. So the advantage of that certainly would be, well, I'm not sure about where I want to put it. And I like that ability, but the more you do that, the less tacky it's going to be. So, um, they are easy to refill. You just pop this whole thing off. This is the refill that you would throw away. You buy a new refill, you hold onto this guy and you just pop them back in. What I would say the up level, the next level to, uh, of, from that, for especially for a card maker or anybody that uses paper crafts, is score tape. So it comes in a package like this. We sell it in different widths. Um, you get a ton on here. There's 27 yards on here. You, and this, you, you don't, the, the equivalent in terms of stickiness is, is hard to even compare these two, but about that much is about the same as sticky level as this. Even that's not true because this is so much stronger. Um, I love this because you can tear it to whatever size you want. You don't have to use scissors. 
and you just burnish it. To use it, you just burnish it now, and then you peel off this paper liner to reveal the sticky. So that's the sticky, it's clear, but it is very, very strong. I'm gonna glue this, fold this over and glue that. It's super strong, so even on this textured paper, it will be stuck tight. This is not one downside. This is not one where you can reposition a bunch. Definitely not. This is this one you can reposition a little bit and get away with it. This one, once it's down, it's down. You try to pull that up, you're gonna tear it for sure. This is also really great for anybody that does paper where you're folding paper, maybe you're making your own envelopes or those really fun paper craft like boxes and things like that. Um, you want a really strong tape or glue. If you want a dry adhesive that's super, super strong. I would get score tape absolutely hands down this is what i like it's also heat heat resistant in terms of it's not gonna if i put the heat tool over this something i've glued with this it will melt the adhesive and, the, and your your element would fall off where this won't this will not heat will not uh, deter this from sticking it will continue to stick um little known fact i don't want to get too side too sidetracked but no matter what adhesive you have you can emboss on it with heat with a heat tool and embossing powder that's really fun i do cover that in the in the adhesive overview video that we have um, on YouTube if you want to watch all about adhesives because I could literally talk about glue all day <laughs> but for it for a sticky um, tape that is a dry tape I recommend this one if you have if you haven't already step up to this try it you are you will not regret it I promise you I pulled the other one apart let me pull this one apart There you go. So yeah, I think that proves the point, right? Underneath of this was is the Tombow. So the, the Tombow, you can still see the runner. And score tape, I don't, where, does, where did the glue even go? It's still under here. There's the glue. So definitely, come on. You see what I mean? It's Once you glue, it's not meant to come undone. <laughs> so that's how strong, I mean, it is just a very, very strong glue. Score tape all the way for the win. Who agrees with me? Give me some hearts and thumbs ups. <laughs> okay, um, let me talk about glue without talking about other kinds of glue too. So let's talk about liquid glue. There's so many different kinds. I'm not even gonna go over all of them. I'm just gonna give you the two that I like the best. These are the two that I like the best. Third runner up would be this guy. So this is um, Tombow Mono Multi Liquid Glue. And then this one is Tombow Mono Multi or mono aqua liquid glue, sorry. And then this one is a multi medium in matte. This is also available in gloss, but the matte is the best. Um, what I what I like about this one, it comes out white, so you can see what you're doing, it dries clear. It has two applicators, so you can use the broad or the narrow. Uh, it's called multi because if you use it while it's white, it will be a permanent adhesive. If you let it, if you put on the glue and let it dry clear, so right now, if I glue something to that, it'll be permanently on there. If I let this sit and, and wait till it's clear and lightly tacky, then it'll be a temporary adhesive. So I love that. It um, is it levels. So when you put when you squish something on there, it's going to squish out. So when using a liquid adhesive, make sure. Let me find a. Let me find a little thing to glue. When you use a liquid adhesive, make sure that you put the glue in the middle. Okay, and a little bit goes a long way. You don't, here's what you don't wanna do. Way too much glue, way too close to the edge. Now when I glue these two, this down, this is this, this is the one that didn't have too much, and this is the one that has too much. With a little bit of pressure, look at how much glue I got squished out. So less is more, liquid glue goes a long way. It's definitely economical, definitely a very strong hold. I absolutely love this guy, to me, this is the liquid version of score tape. I absolutely love this glue. As far as hold, very, very good. Good for paper to chipboard. Good, it's, it's great for photos. I love the two size tips. It's great for art, um, like mixed media, for art journaling, that kind of stuff, really good. Um, this is also a really great adhesive. It has a lot of the same properties as this one, it's just that it's not multi. Um, it does dry clear, it does have the two size tips. The advantage of this one over this is that this is also a sealer so you can seal things with it so I could put this over the top of my butterfly here if I wanted to 
all over the whole thing. I'm not going to make it a mess, but you could put it over the whole thing and squish it around or paint it around and then it would seal much like a Mod Podge would. You can, if you do diamond dots, this will seal your diamond dots in place and not take away any sparkle. Super nice. The matte multi, um, I really love this medium. This is a very, very strong glue, just like this one is. I love this because it dries matte. So if you squeeze it out and you get, um, and you got, uh, too much, like I did right here, it will dry totally clear and matte. So there won't be any shine. This will dry clear too, but you'll have a shine on it. This one, you won't have any shine because it's matte. If this works great on multiple kinds of surface of items too. So you can use this to glue things like glass and wood and chipboard. Um, a lot of different things. It's also, you can do transfers, image transfers with this. Um, and you can seal stuff too, like you can with this one. So this is a great, just like multi-purpose glue. Um, while we're talking about liquid glues, this is my, my favorite, but I prefer in this applicator. I saw somebody said they almost never use the broad tip. Me either, girl. Almost never. But I almost always use this glue, uh, this glue bottle, which is a precision glue. This is really an old one, but I keep this guy filled with this stuff. And then that just allows, gives me absolute precision control because it has this little needle tip right there. And if it ever did get clogged, you would just um, clean it up with uh, running under some hot water. So I'll do this guy that has these little tiny holes in it. But you can put the glue exactly where you want it. And I can just get teensy, like, let me do this tip right here. I can get just the teeniest drops if I want to. I don't know if you can see that in the light to glue that down. really good you can put this is the um, this is actually a, a tool uh, designed for people that like to do quilling because they need that precision um, but you, we do sell this bottle you can fill it with whatever your favorite liquid adhesive is but if I was going to buy um, if I was gonna buy absolutely only buy one of these personally I just use this one may, way more however if you do a lot more mixed media and and uh, or a lot of different kinds of things I think I'd go this route both good. This is also just more affordable than this, but um, just really economical to go this route. Okay. And one last glue. I don't even have a comparison because there is no comparison to the Mighty Embellishment Glue Stick. This isn't something you find everywhere, but it is tremendous. This is super cheap, like a glue stick should be. It's super easy to use because you were trained in preschool how to use a glue stick, right? If not, it's just like a chapstick. Just don't put it on your lips because you'll never talk again. <laughs> so you just turn the wheel to turn it up and you just put adhesive where you want it. Comes out clear, stays clear. But whatever you glue with this guy, it is a forever hold. I think when you, when I first show this to people, they're like, it's a glue stick. And you immediately think of like an Elmer's glue stick or a kid's glue stick. Um, no, no, no. Those are filled with like wax fillers. This is pure paste. This is extraordinarily strong. Do not let a kid play with this because whatever he or she glues, it will be glued forever. It's not coming back. No, no, no. <laughs> this glues heavyweight stuff too. Chipboard, glass, burlap, um, fabric, uh, did I say wood? Uh, all kinds, of, whatever kind of paper you want. It is photo safe, so you can use it in your scrapbooks too, but it's extra, extra, extra strong. I glue, for mixed media person, if you're gluing like heavyweight things to other heavyweight things, like I glued a wooden letter to a painted canvas, so I had I had sealant and paint on there too to get in the way of the bond. This is strong; it will not come off. Um, the person that sold this to me, I'll tell you the truth, he gave me his his um, business card with a penny on it that was glued with this, and he said, "Take the penny off." I dare you, and I could not take the penny off without ripping the paper. Absolutely incredible! It blew my mind because I was like, I don't need a glue stick. I was highly skeptical. As the buyer for craft, for craft for us, if it's a glue, if it's a tool, I'm using it before I put it in our stores because I need to know people will be successful with it. This is a strong adhesive. It's very, very strong. The advantage of using a glue stick over, say, this for permanency is that you have time before it sets up. So if you didn't get exactly right place, you can pick it up and move it again. If that is your frustration with something like this, you might want to go this route. Very, very, very strong glue. Highly recommend it. And so if I could only have a few glues, 
These are the glues I pick. <laughs> What's your favorite glue? Okay, we've covered trimmers, scissors, knives, and adhesive, and mats, and tweezers. Let's talk about cardstock. I know that's not even a tool, but I think it's, when we're talking about going up a level or doing next level stuff, I think it's important to talk about this. Um, let me show you sort of a basic card. So this is just basic, you know, I think it's an eight or a 10 pack, 10 pack of white cardstock. Okay. This is a typical like value pack size or what you would find in a value pack cardstock. It's like a 65 weight. Is the glue stick expensive? No, it's, I think it's $2.99 and it will last you so long. The name of the glue stick, Pioneer Embellishment Glue Stick. We have them uh, in the stores and then I think there's a three pack online. Okay. Um, so this is, this is the most common, if you buy a pack of paper or um, a cardstock pack, whether it's, you know, a stack of, of cardstock or pre-made cards, they're typically a 60, 65 pound weight. Not that there's something bad about that. It's just that it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't stand up as well. So this is the 65 pound one. Now, if, as soon as I start putting embellishments on there, it's super flimsy, right? It, it doesn't want to hold its shape. It's, it's already like, it's okay. I'm gonna give it a fair chance. I really want it to stay like that. The upgrade from that would be something like this. This is Card Maker's Choice 100 pound. So this is a, the closest relative to pack I could find to this one. Also, it's just that it's a 20 pound instead of a 10 pound. So this guy, just feeling, I, I wish you could feel it. Is just feeling the difference between the two, but let's compare even just the thicknesses. I hope you can, I hope that comes across on camera. So this is the, the thin 65 and this is the 100 pound. And it is, it is very strong. It definitely will hold its shape. When, when you make cards with it, it is like night and day in terms of, of the stability of your car, of the card that you're making. It, it just holds its shape better. This is just so flimsy. Like just even touching it a little bit, it wants to like bend and fall down. And this one just holds its shape better. So strong. It's also super smooth. It's super bright white. It's easy to color on. It accepts almost every kind of medium. Um, and it's easy to die cut. In fact, I like die cuts cut with a little thicker paper because they just have that more substance. They just feel like this is special, if that makes sense. Um, so I just wanted to point out cardstock. Um, you can get them in in uh, packs of cards. So there's a ten, there's a 20 pack. There's also a 50 pack, and you can just get a 50 pack of just the white if you want that. We do in stores sell individual colors as well. Here's just a handful of the 100 pound. We sell different weights of the open stock cardstock like this, um, but here's just I just grabbed like a few of 100 pound in colors. We have all different weights. We have from 65 to 100. I think we even have 120. And uh, there's a lot of 73s, 80s in there. Um, 80 pound weight is also really great, especially for layering. But for your card base, 100 pound is ideal, in my opinion. But I would at least do an 80 pound. Um, also, it's just great for coloring because the colors don't bleed through or, um, um, you know, you can't see it on the other side. <laughs> okay. So I just really cannot recommend card makers choice enough excellent excellent paper okay and then I wanted to talk also about ink pads and pens so let me bring in some ink pads here I'm only doing black um, there's so many and I have an entire video to get dedicated to nothing but um, ink pads. So if you want to learn more about ink pads, you can go there. I'm not going to go dive into every one of these because ink pads are like my thing. <laughs> and I absolutely love them. And I could talk about them forever, but if I had to narrow it down, I'm just, if we were, if you're like, how do I get started? What's the right one for me? Um, I'm going to ask you a couple follow-up questions, but the most often, um, ink pad that I recommend that for just black 
is this one. But depending on your answers to my questions, it might be this one. So let me just tell you why. Sorry for the squeakiness of the glass net. Okay, I like this one the best of all of them because it lasts three to five times longer. So if we're talking economy, this is a great one. It is the only one with a double hinge, hinge lid, so you can put the lid underneath without losing it. It stays attached. It also makes it easier to hold and bring your ink pad to your stamp. It is the it has ink that is very super fine ink, almost conditions your stamps. It's so slick and the coverage is out of this world. It will give you full, complete coverage. It's really a great, great um, um, ink pad. I just I think I need to actually um, stamp some stuff. So let me grab. Let me grab a stamp or two here. Oh, this this is almost too small, but I got it. Okay. This one has never been used before, so I'm going to condition this stamp really quick. This is a bold stamp. A bold stamp is when it is thick. These are thin or fine detail. This is a bold stamp. Bold stamps in particular, you can do this with every stamp, but bold stamps in particular need to be conditioned first. And to condition, you can either stamp them if you own it, it is a Versamark, and just stamp that off, or just use a pencil eraser. This is a plain old number two pink eraser. What that does is it, I'm just rubbing it over. It just removes any oils and, and um, um, chemicals that were in the manufacturing process. And I'm just going to rub that off. And it just, make, you don't only have to do that the first time, and now your stamp is conditioned and it's going to accept ink really well. If you've ever inked a stamp and noticed that it um, it's really splotchy, that's what the problem was. Okay, so I'm inking this up. I just make sure that it's well inked. And then I'm going to stamp on my 100 pound white smooth cardstock, card maker's choice. I like to, um, no matter what kind of paper you're using, let it sit on the paper for a few seconds. Let the let that ink penetrate the paper. And you get this beautiful, crisp image. Look at the full detail coverage of that. Hopefully that comes in focus. There we go. Yeah, very, very good ink. And it's great for fine detail stuff too. Um, it lasts, like I said, it lasts three to five times longer than any other ink. This is the one that I recommend most of the time. However, let me point out something. There is so much ink in here. It is what I call super juicy. So if you are, unfortunately, some people will ink a stamp like this. Smash, smash, smash. If you're leaving an impression in there, and look at this mess on here. Way too hard. You don't need to go that hard, but if you're heavy handed, this probably isn't the ink pad for you. <laughs> this is this is not the ink pad for you then. Um, if you can't, you gotta lighten it up a little bit. It's super juicy. You do not have to do that. Ink, to ink it, you're just gonna gently tap it across like that, and you're good to go. Okay. You, some of you feel my pain? <laughs> yeah. Okay, if you are more heavy handed, or you don't think you can remember that, this one is um, really great because it has a very firm felt um, cloth, or sorry, cloth pad. So it can, it can withstand more of that. It's not as juicy as this one. Um, how, um, this one is really great though, especially, these are like my two top favorites. I mean, it's neck and neck. They are both very, very good inks. This one is um, absolutely acid free permanent and waterproof so if you're especially if you're a mixed media or you do um, art journaling where you're doing this where you're needing to stamp over other kinds of mediums and that kind of thing um, this is a fantastic fantastic black ink pad also just for regular if you just want to watercolor your image or color marker over it or anything like that else as long as it's not alcohol based markers but just write like color pencils or Tombow markers or anything like that water-based this is going to be a great they're both good for that. This one can accept watercolor too, so they're both really, really good. This one just lasts longer and it's juicier. And you could actually, this is the only one of all of these, I could leave the lid off overnight, come back and it's still just as juicy tomorrow. The first one, the name of it is VersaFine. I'm using the Onyx Black color. And then the Ranger is Archival Ink in Jet Black. This one comes in this size or in a big size. But no matter, and that, that's a common question we get in the stores is, 
what if my stamp is bigger than my ink pad? Where's all the big ink pads at? We do offer this one a big one, but you don't need a big ink pad. Every single one of these has a raised pad, so you can bring your stamp to you can bring your ink pad to the stamp and ink this way to make sure that it's fully covered. Okay. So these are the two that I most often recommend to people that are going to be card making. If you want to be able to stamp on wood and on fabric and on other things, then I would not get these, and I would get this one, the VersaCraft, because it's meant for that kind of stuff. And if you want to stamp on glass or plastic, I would not get any of these. I would get this one because it's intended for that. The stays on is intended for glass or plastic. I go into more detail about these on my on my video that's strictly about inks. We'll, we'll put a link to that in the comments after I'm done here so that you can locate if you want to learn more about inks because I have a lot to say. The la but the last thing to talk about is on inks is if you're going to color with alcohol based markers then you need an alcohol based marker friendly ink pad because other ink pads will ruin your, your, your precious pens. So if you use Copics or any kind of alcohol based marker you need one that is friendly to that. So that's either going to be Memento Tuxedo Black, or to me, the upgrade from that is, or the next level is Hero Arts Intense Black because this is so much more black. They both are friendly to your alcohol markers and you can use them with other things too. So if you like, if you mostly color alcohol inks, but you also want to be able to um, watercolor or do, uh, not, not watercolor, but a uh, color pencil or, um, uh, other mediums then you can still do that with these but these are friendly for your alcohol markers they so if you stamp something and I wanted to outline this with a alcohol marker this would not be good because I didn't use one of these but if I did it wouldn't harm my marker meaning that the, the salt the the ink in here wouldn't go up into my alcohol pen I like this one over this one because it's so much more black um, this one is almost almost charcoal compared to this one um, in my in the video I'm, I'm referencing, I actually show you the differences um, between these, so you can you can check that out. Okay, but if I had to pick one for me, it's this one. But this is a really close second. Okay, so that's black ink pads, and then next time I'll talk about pens. So much info today, right? Lots. Okay, pens. When you're going to use a pen, you want to, especially in crafting, where you're going to, maybe you're going to sign a card, or maybe you want to draw, or you want to doodle, or you want to journal in your scrapbook, or you simply want to, like, keep a record, uh, you know, in your, um, in your planner, or in your, um, bullet journal, uh, whatever it is, you, you want a pen that's going to work really well. The one that I always recommend is Micron. So Micron's available in all different kinds of, you can get them individually, you can get them in sets. Here's a really good basic beginner six pack set. And I have those here. So Micron pens have numbers on the tip of the, of the cap and the number indicates the size of the tip. So the biggest one is the 08. Okay, so that's that guy. I'm gonna color, I'm just gonna draw a line on here. So that's the eight, and then the five, and then the three. So what's great about these is that they are archival safe, so they're totally fine for your, not fine, but recommended for any kind of documenting where you want to know that they're not, the ink in here is not going to harm your photos or your documents or anything like that. It's totally safe for that. They're ar archival quality and they are also um, waterproof and fade proof. Um, and they are what, if you do any kind of documenting, here's a little baby one. Okay, so here's the different sizes from the widest tip to the smallest tip. Look how teeny tiny the 005 is. So these are really great for artists that like to, to draw or shade with pens. If you do that that fun um, doodling art, it's called Zentangle. These are really fun for that. Um, so artists all over the world love, love the Micron. These are from Japan. Um, they're called Pigma Micron. And in researching these a couple years ago, I discovered that 
the pigma actually stands is is short for pigment and you wouldn't think of pigment as permanent but they have microscopically um, altered the pigma their pigment to make it archival and waterproof and fade proof absolutely the best possible paint you can get it's bleed proof it's quick drying um, it's chemical resistant it's absolutely the best pen is it the prettiest one you know but it's the best pen and it's absolutely waterproof I want to show you a couple of other pens these are this one is perfectly fine this is the um, Stabilo these are great pens super inexpensive you can buy them in sets or individually and it's a great pen and it has a nice fine tip it's great for journaling and all of that the jelly roll pen oh actually this is a glaze pen but also from Sakura um, the Tombow Twin Tone is nice because you have a fine tip and a wide tip in the same pen. That's nice. This is the Tombow Brush Pen. So we have a bullet tip on one end and um, a brush tip that's flexible on this end so I can make it really wide or thin. These are great pens, but these are not waterproof pens. And, and these are. Where's, let me find some water. That'd be great. I thought I had some here. Well, if I had some water, <laughs> I don't know where it went. Um, I could spray the, oh, here it is, okay. So I'm gonna spray this one. I'll spray my ink that I stamped too, see if anything happens to that, and then I'll spray this one. Ooh, uh-oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, none of those were, were waterproof. This ink that I stamped was the VersaFine. So it's, it's not waterproof, but it's water resistant. Um, and you can see it did pretty well. And so you can watercolor on it. Once it's dry, it is, it's good to go. And then all of the Micron, no bleeding at all. And no smudging either, really good. That is from, I touched some of that. This is not smudging. So Micron pens, and also if you're gonna address envelopes, use a Micron pen, really, seriously, please. If you don't, there is a tool, there is an option. Um, I probably, this is, this is, I'll talk about this in another. Um, uh, I'll talk about this in another video sometime. But I think it's a good opportunity to show you something. So we saw that these bled really, really bad, right? You put these same bleeders over here. Okay, so those are the same ones as over here, right? Check this out. This is distress glaze. Just a teeny tiny bit on your finger, and I'm gonna rub it over all of this. Just make sure that you have it covered. And now I'm gonna put water on that, and it does not bleed. This is I didn't I didn't I didn't get that part, but right here it does not bleed. So this protects. This is like a sealant for that. So distress glaze, micro distress glaze. But as far as pens go, if you're journaling or doing any kind of documenting. Or you just want to know that you're 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 using a good quality pen, Micron. Micron's also available in different colors and, um, like I said, in different sets and sizes and stuff. So much info today. Are we are we hanging in there? Are we liking this? I think I've covered everything I really really wanted to. Um, do we have any questions? Hi, Chris. I see you there. Hi, Diane. Everyone needs a white pen. That's true. And this, as far as a white writing pen, this is the pen, the white pen that I like. This is um, Uniball Signo, and I like the broad tip. Let me find a black piece of paper. This is the one that I like the best. Because, let me see if I'm on film. There we go because it truly is bright white. It's not milky white at all. It is for a gel pen. It's very, very good. What you need to know, this is true of any gel pen, but what you need to know about this gel pen is you need to write slowly. So go about half speed. And I'm actually drawing on to, um, textured cardstock too, so I'm going extra slow. But this is absolutely the best white gel pen. Wow. 
really, really good. Look how much, look how strongly that stands out. Isn't that awesome? Yes, definitely. So for a white pen that you're going to write with, I definitely like the Uniball Signo Broad White. Jelly Roll White is pretty good, but I find it slightly milky, uh, like a little bit see-through. I really like how strong white this one is, for sure. I'm looking for questions in the comments. Hopefully I've covered a lot of them. Um, I will definitely go back and asking, I'll go, definitely go back and answer any questions that I may have missed. And I will put um, links to some, like the glue video if I can, yeah, the glue video and the ink video, I will do that. Mm -hmm. Looks like there was mostly the most interest in the glue, huh? So I would love to know if you guys learned something today, if you found this information helpful. Um, if it, and hopefully if you were like wondering about something or going back and forth about any of the subjects that hopefully I've answered questions or kind of clarificate, clarified some stuff for you. Um, and I want to say, I don't remember the date. I will put in an announcement, but if you are not already a member of our paper crafts group, I suggest that you do go ahead and go over there and join the paper crafts group because early in March, I'm going to do, uh, tools you didn't know you needed. Um, and this is one example, so you kind of got a sneak pre preview. Um, I have a bunch of tools that maybe you don't know about or that are just like game changers. So I'm going to share that um, in, a, in a week or two over on the Paper Crafts page. And also um, over on the Paper Crafts page is where we hold our monthly card club and where you can get discounts. And I have an amazing prize pack, actually three prize packs that I'm going to give away at our next club, which is the first Thursday of every month at one o'clock. And that is on the paper crafts group page. If you're into clubs and you want to join them, um, actually tomorrow is our quilt club and that's on the quilt. Um, the yarn and, um, the, the yarn group, uh, quilt and yarn, sorry. Um, Facebook group, um, that you can find also with craft Ross. So if you're not already a member of that, you'll want to join that one tomorrow. We'll, we'll do quilt club. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was informative. Um, if you have questions about any other tools, even if I didn't mention mention the tool you're wanting to know about, put it in the comments. I will um, get back to you, maybe even with a video. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye-bye. <laughs>